Not every potential couple at the zoo has the luxury of time to cement their relationship. Chester's Butterfly House is home to a gentle giant of the insect world, with wings the size of human hands. The Atlas moth is the world's biggest species of moth in terms of wing surface area. They're really pretty and they've got cute faces. I think most bugs are cute. My mum thinks I'm weird. The zoo's goal is to have its own homegrown population, but it currently relies on sustainable chrysalis imports from their native Southeast Asia. It's quite tricky to breed these guys after they hatch out as an adult from their cocoons. They don't live that long. The atlas moths don't have workable mouth parts, so they can't feed. They just have to survive off all the nutrients and energy reserves they've collected as a caterpillar. And so it's very difficult to get a male and female out at the same time. And even if you do, the likelihood of them mating is so small. Two males, Simon and Dave, hatched yesterday. And there's a race to find a female before their short adult lives are over. The males usually live around three to four days because they're very active. They use all their energy trying to look for a female to breed with. But there are currently no adult females at the zoo, so Dave and Simon have to hope one hatches soon. This one kind of looks like a female, quite long and thin, which makes me think it might be a girl. But I've been tricked before. Now we're just crossing our fingers, because if we don't get a girl out soon, then the poor males won't be around any longer. It doesn't seem much of a life, does it? They just mainly exist to reproduce, and that's about it, really. It's kind of sad. Atlas moths Dave and Simon are halfway through their adult lives and still awaiting the emergence of a female. Humans have many years to find who they want to spend the rest of their lives with, but for moths, they're only on this earth for about a week as an adult, so they need to find their mate fast. Overnight, one of the remaining chrysalises begins to hatch, and three hours later, reveals itself in all her glory. It's a girl who we have named Linda, and luckily the two boys are still alive, so let's get it on. In the wild, females remain in the spot they hatched, releasing pheromones for males to pick up on from far away with their feathery antenna. So we hope that when we put them together, the male will smell the female's pheromones and just gently try and position himself next to her so that they can mate. Got you a lovely lady. Go on, go do your thing. Dave's passions are immediately aroused by the arrival of Linda. Dave the moth, he looks really strong, so we're hoping that he's going to get it done. Seems promising so far. Macho male Dave seems to be going for broke, using his vital energy reserves to seduce Linda. Simon, on the other hand, appears to be playing it cool. Whether this is because he's conserve it for the opportune moment, I don't know. But Dave is still very active, so I think it's quite promising that we'll see Dave and Linda mating. The Atlas moths are nocturnal, so once we leave for the evening with all the lights off, it's nice and dark, and hopefully we'll come in in the morning to find them mating. If we find them connected, then that's a good sign. It's 9 a.m. at the Butterfly House, Expectations are high that Atlas moth Linda has mated with one of just two surviving males overnight. Simon could be playing it a little too cool with Linda, as he doesn't appear to have moved since yesterday. But things could be looking up, as his love rival Dave has passed away in the night. Uh oh. <laughs> Here's a nice one as well. It's a natural part of keeping moths, unfortunately, that they don't live that long, and we do expect it. For most women, 
Having men fall at their feet can be a compliment. But in Linda's case, this could be very bad news. Now all hope rests on Simon. So we just hope Simon can find Linda and hopefully he'll mate with her. Can you not find her? Should I give you a little bit of help? Come on, buddy. a little bit scared. She's quite intimidating. She's quite big compared to him. Fingers crossed. I really hope he's gonna do the deed. This is the most important moment of Simon's short adult life. With no mouth to feed, Atlas moths are literally at the bottom of the food chain. So their sole purpose is to survive long enough to reproduce before they starve to death or are preyed upon by the birds and bats of the rainforest. Connected. Against the odds, Simon finds his one and only. Copulation between Atlas moths can last more than 12 hours, meaning up to an eighth of Simon's adult life could be spent attached to Linda. I suppose it's so hard to come by a fellow mate, so maybe they're just making sure that they've done everything correctly. Keepers must wait to see if this union leads to the arrival of Atlas moth caterpillars. It's been three days since Simon consummated his whirlwind romance with Linda. And this morning, she's begun to lay her clutch of eggs. Females can lay up to 300 eggs, but neither Linda or Simon will ever get to hear the patter of little caterpillar feet. By the time Linda's eggs hatch, unfortunately, both Linda and Simon won't be around anymore. So it's really up to us. They've just left the eggs in our capable hands to take care of. She's got one stuck to her, so I'll have to leave that one. Okay. Hopefully in about 10 days to about two weeks, we should start to see some little caterpillars emerge. At the Butterfly House, it's been two and a half weeks since Simon and Linda's one night stand, and there's good news. Linda's eggs were successfully fertilized by Simon, and now Atlas moth caterpillars have hatched. I love Atlas moth caterpillars. I think they're really cool looking things. All the stuff they eat as a caterpillar then needs to stay with them and help them get through life in a cocoon and then life as a moth. So they have a voracious appetite. They eat all the time, which also means they kind of poo all the time as well. The caterpillars will continue eating for about a month to about six weeks, and then they'll start to pull in leaves towards themselves and start spinning silk around their bodies to create a cocoon. Simon and Linda may have had one of the shortest romances at the zoo, but together they've managed to complete the cycle and secure its next generation of Atlas moths. <laughs>